This is a story about how I accidentally custom ordered a Celadon bonsai pot in the city of Gangjin, which is in the southern part of Korea. I think it's also a story about human connections and about the gifts that have come to me through the practice of this hobby of bonsai. So last vacation I decided to take a trip in Korea and usually during my vacations here I'd go to some Southeast Asian country like Cambodia or Thailand but the world still isn't too well set up for international travel so these holidays I decided to just stay local. One of the things I love most about Korea is how easy it is to travel. The inner city bus network will take you anywhere. And when you get there, there are always motels to stay at. You don't need to book ahead. So I decided to go to Wando, which is an island off the southern coast of Korea, and not too far from where I live. It looked pretty, and I've never been there. My local bus terminal is small, so for most places, you need to catch a connecting bus. So I looked for another place that would get me going in the right general direction, and there was a bus going to Gangjin. I'd never been there either. So I hopped on the bus to Gangjin and decided to spend my first night there in that city. While I was on the bus, I looked at what there was to do in Gangjin because I didn't know anything about that town. And I found two things that seemed interesting to me. The first was the Gangjin Bay Ecological Park, and the other was the Celadon Pottery Museum. When I got to Gangjin, my first stop was to find a love motel close to the bus terminal. People who aren't familiar with them imagine love motels to be quite a lot sleazier than they actually are. Actually, they're a convenient place to stay for all types of travelers, not just people enjoying romantic trysts. That said, they vary in their level of sleaziness. I really like love motels because they're always an adventure, and you never know what you're going to get. As it turned out, this one was definitely at the sleazier end of things with a unique circular bed and a vending machine for condoms, lube, and sex toys. I left my stuff, went back to the bus terminal, and caught a taxi to the ecological park. It turned out to be fantastic, far better than I expected. The light was amazing, and I enjoyed looking at the mud skippers and hearing the birds and just being there. The next day I took a taxi out to the Celadon Museum. It ended up being further out in the country than I expected, which becomes important later in my story. Gangjin is famous for its historical blue Celadon glazed pottery. And honestly, before I got into bonsai, I wasn't that interested in ceramics. And if I'm being truthful, I suppose I'm still not that interested in ceramics. But bonsai pots are part of bonsai too and you do pick up a little along the way. Celadon is a blue-green glaze that was developed in China and later exported to Korea. From the 10th to 13th centuries, Celadon pottery was refined in Korea, in Gangjin and a couple of other places, to a level that, at least in the way Koreans tell the story, surpassed even China's. If you're interested in Korean Celadon, there's a great 70s documentary about Yoo Gun Hyung, a Korean pottery master, and his attempts to recreate the Celadon process, which was nominated for an Academy Award. You can find it on YouTube. The Celadon Museum in Gangjin holds many of these priceless works from that time period. The museum was good, but in the end it was a lot of pots, and many of them broken, which were all the same color. So although I liked it, I was a little underwhelmed. So after visiting the museum, of course what I wanted was a Celadon bonsai pot. And there was a large gift shop associated with the museum. So I went there and I asked them if they had any hwabun, which just means plant pot in Korean. But in all this large gift shop, they didn't have any plant pots. I did end up finding these sort of shallow round uh, containers which don't have holes in the bottom, so I had to drill holes in the bottom. And they're quite nice, and I've already used one of them for a small maple. 
but they weren't really what I was looking for. So after that, I felt like I was done with Gangjin and I was ready to go back to the bus terminal. But I mentioned before that uh, the museum was quite a ways out in the country. And it turned out that when I tried to call a taxi on Kakao Taxi, there weren't any taxis available. Now this wasn't a disaster, there were several options available to me. I knew there was a bus route and probably I could even have had the museum call a taxi for me. But right at that moment I was feeling just slightly stressed. So I thought I would find somewhere to get a coffee while I thought about my next move. And it was at that point that I noticed across the road this small combination coffee shop and pottery studio. So I decided to go there to have a coffee and think about my next step. Compared to the oversized museum gift shop, this place was small, crowded, and nice. When I came in, there was an older Korean woman there and she was quite excited to see me. She was in the process of teaching English to the gallery owner in exchange for pottery lessons. And I ended up talking to her for quite a while. She lived for a while in Canada and she spoke English very well. The older woman's English name was Heidi and I asked her about plant pots but there were none there too. I ended up talking to her about bonsai and I showed her some pictures from my Instagram. She was quite interested in that. I talked to her about bonsai pots and ended up sketching one in her book for her. I told her about drainage holes and the need for tie down wire holes. And she told me that that afternoon she was going to make a bonsai pot just for me. She told me she wanted to make it in a rougher style than the pictures I'd shown her and asked if that was okay for bonsai pots. And I said, sure. In the end, it's about matching the pot to the tree. She asked me about what color I wanted. And of course, being in Gangjin, I told her I wanted a celadon glaze. It's one of my favorite colors for bonsai pots anyway. She got my phone number and told me she would message me when the pot was finished. I asked her about taxis and she told me that yes, they were too far out in the country for a cacao taxi to work. So I finished my coffee and left, feeling better now about my Gangjin experience and happy that fate and cacao taxi had brought me to that place. I went back to the terminal, then caught the bus for Wando. Eventually I came home again, and I forgot all about the bonsai pot that Heidi said she was going to make for me. About six weeks later I got a message from her. She had finished my pot and she sent pictures. I immediately asked if I could buy it, and we settled on 70,000 won. The only difficult thing about that being that neither of us wanted to name a price. A couple of days later it came in the mail. I love this pot. You could say it's crude, but I knew when I talked to her that she wasn't a professional ceramicist, and I'm okay with that. I'm not a professional bonsai artist either, and rustic pots certainly have a place in bonsai. I don't know what tree I'll put in it, but it will be something that I'll keep forever. I'll probably take it back to Australia with me next time I go back, because that's where I keep my permanent trees. Whether or not this is a good pot, and to be honest, I do like it very much. More than that, this pot is a story. And everybody loves stories. I know that the couple of times I've sold bonsai trees, people always ask, does the tree have a story? And this pot is a story. It's a story of a time and a trip I took. And I do think there'll come a point in the future where I remember that trip and I miss these times. And this pot will always be a reminder of that to me. Truthfully, before I got into bonsai, I wouldn't have gone to a ceramics museum. I probably still would have gone to a nice art cafe, but I wouldn't have had something to talk to the people there about. This human connection that I made came from bonsai. What I'm trying to say is, I have bonsai to thank for this memento of my trip that I will try to keep forever, and this human connection, and this story. And that is just one of the ways that I'm growing with bonsai.